All right, back with a uh, with another video today. Today we're going to be doing this, uh, this little EP floating crab. So cool little crab pattern, great for uh, some different tidal flow situations. A lot of times guys like to use these off of uh, bridges when you see crabs floating by, or even uh, places like Belize where you see permit feeding up high under the sargassum. So. I'm going to start here, we got a Gamagatsu SL12S size 2. We got some uh, chartreuse uh, 140 denier thread. So I'm just going to go start off by just putting a nice little thread base down. This is a pretty simple fly, not too much to it. So I think most of you will find this pretty easy to tie. So we're going to go to just behind the point, probably about between the point and the uh, and the barb of the hook there. We're gonna stop. Then we're gonna get some of these uh, mono eyes. So these happen to be uh, large mono eyes, um, or no, these are extra large mono eyes, but large would work as well. So we're gonna tie these in on the bottom of the hook. We're just gonna figure eight them on there. some wraps under it just make sure those eyes aren't really going anywhere on us all right the next material that we're going to use is EP one inch uh, tarantula brush we're going to use it today we're going to use the uh, tan color I've already got a little section of brush here from some flies I made earlier so I'm just going to pick a little bit of that fiber out of there just to expose some of the wire and I'm just going to start it, start tying it in right here behind the eyes and work right in front of the eyes, just making sure I tie this wire here in good. Make sure that's secure. I'm going to work our thread to the middle of the uh, shank of the hook. And uh, we're going to get the claws on now. So these are the EP crab claws. You could make these yourself with... Uh, micro ultra chenille uh, this client just preferred this to be the exact way that EP does theirs so we're using all EP components on the fly today so we're gonna measure this out I kinda want just before that first joint uh, on the eye as you can see there and we're gonna kinda just tie this in right on the side of the hook roll a little on me there and we'll cut out that excess. Now these claws aren't going to stay put right now, but once we start wrapping the uh, the brush on there, it'll keep these claws in place. So you can see what I'm talking about. The second little knuckle that they made here in the claw, you want it right before it gets to the eye, and that'll kind of keep it out at the right length. And we'll go ahead and we'll add one on the other side as well. And cut that excess out. Just to help these kick out a little more, you can get a couple wraps right on the inside of each claw, which will also help them just really just stay put. Then we'll just advance our thread forward to the front of the hook here. Alright. So next thing we're gonna do is get some gorilla glue clear. So not something you guys see me use a ton of. But for this pattern, you want to really make it so this uh, brush and uh, ultimately the shell don't spin around the hook on you. So you need to glue it down. And this glue looks, works much better on this application than something like Loctite because this is going to be much cure, much slower curing. So, you know, you're not having to work too fast. So, I mean, I, I can put this stuff on here. It's probably not going to fully dry for a couple of hours so I can put it on there I don't have to worry about working quickly or anything like I would with the Loctite then all I gotta do is just get my hackle pliers and we're gonna kinda fold some of this material back 
And the first wrap we're going to do is right over the eyes. So coming diagonally over the eyes, you're going to want to move the, the uh, claw out of the way. Make sure you kind of pull some of these fibers back over the eye there. Then you're going to move the other claw out of the way and come directly over. And then you're going to pull the claw back and come diagonally over the claw. So you came right over the top of the claw like so. Everything else is just going to be regular, just kind of palmer in that brush in there. And this was kind of so that the, uh, the brush itself would help lock these legs in place. Also, you're trying not to make the front of this fly too, too bushy. You're kind of making it just like a little crab head up there. So, do a couple of wraps here until we get to the front of the fly. Maybe one more wrap. That should be good. And then we'll capture this at the front. We want a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a head on this fly. You know, that green kind of acts like a, almost like an egg sack, like a little attractor color on the pattern. You could definitely go with an orange or you really just wanted a natural tan on there, you could do that as well. So. We'll get our not so good scissors, cut that out of there. And then we're going to take our uh, botkin and kind of pull some of these fibers out and to the sides. So we just want to pick them out and you want to try to pick them out behind the claws and just try to get them to the sides of the uh, hook. So it's going to be a little fluffy, but I'll solve that in a minute. You know, and kind of push it down into that glue as well. You know, really let that glue soak up on it. Now on the top of the fly, we're just going to make a nice straight, even cut because this is where we're going to glue our shell down. Let's clean our head up a little bit better too. All right. All right. So for the top of this fly, these are the these are the uh, EP floating crab bodies. Um, you know, if you wanted to make these yourself, a uh, a piece of two millimeter foam, uh, one of those little foam uh, cutting templates that uh, they sell, and then you just basically glue some some EP fibers to uh, to the top of it. There, not not too hard to make. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna kind of figure out where we want it. Let's see if I can't show you. So you want it just behind where the eyes are, but also ending just where you can still see that green on your thread, the head coming out. So once you kind of know where you want to set it, now we'll go ahead and get our Loctite gel. And you want to make sure you put this on the clean side of the, um, of the phone here, not the side that's got all the fluff on it. If you put it on the fluff side, sometimes what will happen is you'll just rip the fluff off. And, uh, you know, that's not going to really work out for you. So we're going to put a generous amount of uh, super glue on here. And then we're going to put it right where our spot was on here. We want to kind of push those fibers from the bottom down into that super glue. So we can just take our botkin, again, just push those fibers down into the side, get as many glued down to that body as you possibly can. The more you got glued down there, the more buggy this pattern's really gonna look in the water. You know, you get all those legs in there from the tarantula brush that move around and once the thing gets into the current, it really looks like a, uh, like a little crab just floating along in the current, just moving its legs and such. Now we're going to whip finish our front section here. It's okay if you trap a couple fibers. Cut that off. Now I like to clean it up a little bit, so I'm going to take a lighter. Just kind of hit, kind of hit the back of this with a lighter some. Get it just a little bit even. You can take your uh, your scissors. You want to get it. Not so flat, but a little, a little semi-flat 
on the bottom here. Really like trimming up the back. So remember this everything's gonna be flowing this way. So you want a lot of those those legs moving off the sides, stuff like that. So, you know, you kind of just make sure everything's moving in the direction you want it to move. They're not too much material there or anything of that nature. All right. Now we can go ahead, now that our head area is cleaned up, we can put a little bit of loon flow right in our thread wraps, uh, make sure our thread wraps are nice and durable. Hit that with a UV light. And then our last step is going to be to add a little bit of uh, color to this pattern. So I'm going to grab, this is a, uh, a bronze colored Sharpie. I'm just going to start on the top of the crab here and just, just add some dots to the top of the crab, make it look good. These uh, these dots aren't going to make it fish any better, but it's going to make it look better for when your buddies are looking at it in your box. So we'll add a couple of uh, a couple of little lines to the to the claws too, kind of make it look like a nice little crab. I'm going to grab a uh, an orange marker. And right back here, I'm just going to leave a little bit of orange right on the EP fibers. So it kind of gives that uh, that look that it might be a, uh, a spawning crab of some type as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's the uh, that's the EP floating crab. Uh, you could definitely tie this uh, in a non-floating version as well. Put a little weight on it. Uh, get their bodies that aren't floating tie the exact same pattern and you have a nice little fighting crab as well so ideally you would probably want to tie it so it hooks riding up but yeah great little crab so uh, you know next permit trip you go on you know maybe try it out you know if you got a place where there's a lot of crabs flowing through an inlet or off a bridge or something also a great place so yeah thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll get a couple more videos going here shortly